are listening to the Discerning Leader Podcast, brought to you by Leadership Transformations, the podcast that helps you practice a preference for God. And now, here's your host, Steve Machia. Thank you, dear friend, for joining us in the Discerning Leader Podcast, where together we're discovering how best to practice a preference for God in all aspects of our personal lives and relationships, in our leadership and service to others. My name is Steve Machia, and I welcome you on behalf of the entire Leadership Transformations team. For more than 20 years now, our ministry has focused on the spiritual formation, discernment, and renewal of leaders and learners who are serving the church and building up God's kingdom worldwide. To learn more about our work, and to sign up for Pathways, our weekly e-newsletter, simply go to leadershiptransformations.org. And now as we enter into today's episode, let's slow down and attend to what God wants to say to us. And let's prayerfully reflect for just a moment on the reality of the initiating presence of our triune God, the love and compassion of our Heavenly Father, the grace and forgiveness of our Savior, Jesus, and the empowering presence of the Spirit we call holy. And let us hold fast to an awareness of God's presence, his power, and his peace. And let's trust God even more deeply today. And in the word of the Apostle Paul, Romans chapter 8, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Such a good word, Um, especially in this season, season 28 of the Discerning Leader podcast, which we have entitled Silencio, Reflective Practices for Nurturing Your Soul. And my conversation partner uh, is good for my soul. He's my dear friend and brother, Matt Scott. Matt, welcome back to the Discerning Leader podcast. Hey, Steve. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm delighted, dear brother. Uh, you you are part of this whole thing that we've been working through together. The Silencio, uh, which is now in a book form, began as a monthly newsletter uh, written by 22 members of the LTI team. It's kind of a remarkable and uniquely beautiful offering to God and to God's people and we hope that every listener gets a copy of the dis- of uh, yeah the discerning leader um, <laughs> podcast. Yes, if famous you- <laughs> promoted by Steve's book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, I was going to say the discerning life. Yes, we want them gonna, that book too. I'm going to make um, sure they don't edit this out. We got to keep that in. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Silencio. We're yeah, there it is. Silencio is the title of the book and the title of the season that we're in. And we hope that you have a copy. If you don't have a copy, that's okay, because we're still going to talk about these practices and that how important they are for leaders. Um, so yeah, Matt Scott is a leader uh, on the LTI lead team. He's a minister of spiritual formation and our creative director. He's also an incredibly gifted musician and craftsman. Uh, His beautiful wife, Kristen, and their two lovely children hail from the state of South Carolina. So he's one of our team members uh, in the U.S. that, um, yeah, we represent a variety of uh, geographic places and uh, backgrounds and experiences. And Matt has, has been a great addition to the team. And we're thrilled that he's um, he's with us. So thank you, Matt. Uh, we're looking at these spiritual practices from the book Silencio. Uh, which one are we going to come uh, do today? What are we going to cover? Yeah, today we're going to be talking about listening. 
prayer. And Steve, thank you for those kind words. I, I appreciate them so much. It's very gracious and generous of you to say those things. And as you were, as you were talking, I was thinking about this topic. So to our listeners out there, I have a six-year-old son and a four-year-old daughter. And Steve, you and I have talked about this at length. And I think we also talked about it in one of the previous seasons when we were talking about pure listening and the discerning life and the importance of listening to God and noticing God. But we use the word listen a lot in our family. We are trying to instill that spiritual practice in our, in our kids. And it, it's quite comical and frustrating these days as they're getting older, when they start talking, usually uh, with, a, with a tone and uh, some, some words that I don't necessarily find all that respectful of, of my parental role in their life, they'll start saying, you're not listening to me, <laughs> which basically translates to, you're not letting me do what I want to do, you, so you're not listening to me. But it is... It is a hard thing to to do to listen, whether we're four or six or or far beyond that in years. And we're we're great at talking, 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 talking. But it is so difficult to listen, and that certainly translates into a life of prayer. Yeah, and it's hard for me to even imagine this or say this, but add thirty years to your kids, and that's my kids. And listening still is a challenge um, for them listening to me, for me, even listening to them. Um, but you're right. Uh, listening is a challenge. Listening is hard. Listening is, I, I would say, it's the primary skill to develop in life, particularly if you're a leader. If you don't know how to listen, then you don't lead. You just, you just don't lead well if you don't listen well. I, I've encountered even recently um, leaders who just simply don't listen. They like to hear themselves talk, uh, but they're not good listeners. And so as a result, there's very little relationship. So when we're talking about our relationship with God, we're talking about a relationship with one who probably has more important things to say to us than us to him. Mm -hmm. I say that, you know, a little cynically, but we, we, why do we do all the talking when we're praying? When really we need to listen to the voice of God who loves us, desires a relationship with us. And when we talk about prayer, we're talking about a relationship with Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who initiate love, uh, come toward, uh, welcome us home. You know, all those things that God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit do for us. And in our prayer closets, we're kind of noisy and clunky because we're doing all this talking. So mm -hmm. in this particular topic, in this practice, we're we're simply saying, yeah, there's there's time for us to talk in our prayers, but there's also time for us to listen. So when I ask people, you know, when when you what do you think of when you think of the word prayer? You know, it's it may be something like ACTS, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication, which is right. great. I love that. So it's, it's a great, but, but where is listening in that? When we're adoring God, when we're confessing to God, when we're thanking God, when we're supplicating to God for others, we need to put an L somewhere in that in that hmm. ACTS. So talk a little bit about your journey toward being a listener in your prayers because it's a it's a journey it's a learning we're not we're not raised this way right we're raised to be talkers in our prayers okay close your eyes fold your hands and tell god what he needs to know as if he doesn't know already yeah and, you know and, and all of that is good and important it's going to be hard for you to train a 4 and 6 year old to listen to god it's not easy but probably amazingly spectacular to notice their willingness to to pause and to listen and to notice yeah. yeah i i was well into adulthood before i really ever considered prayer from the standpoint of 
listening and beginning to notice and pay attention to the ongoing revelation of God. Mm. I, I saw prayer is okay. Here, here's my list of things that I need to tell God as if he doesn't know, or as if, you know, me calling upon him would be enough to, to move or motivate him to action rather than, you know, and, and sort of approaching God with like, here's, here's what I got going on, God, and here's what I need you to do on my behalf. Or I have questions. Can you provide answers? And instead, what I'm seeking to do, and it is a journey, it absolutely is a journey, um, is to respond to an invitation that is always open and to hear a voice that is, that is speaking over and over and over again. And I think probably if, if I drill down deep enough, I would find that it's a control issue. If I keep talking and I'm kind of, if we're talking like kind of conversation language, I'm, I'm controlling the conversation. Mm -hmm. What happens if I stop talking? Mm. Well, either or a few things could happen. What if God doesn't audibly say the thing that I feel like I need him to say or want him to say? Mm. Or what if he says something that I'm not ready to hear? <laughs> mm. You know, that to me feels like surrender and release of control and it's hard to let go of that. You enter into mystery and unknown space. Ooh. Yeah. Now, <laughs> and that's what people are afraid of. Yeah, I am. <laughs> A bit. Yeah. But it's in those spaces of, of um, attentiveness, noticing. And, and, and in the book, Silencio, our colleague Susan Curry writes about listening prayer. And she, she talks about the importance of listening and noticing and paying attention because prayer is, is de designed to be a face-to-face, heart-to-heart, mind-to-mind, soul-to-soul relating to um, the living God. And so you don't, when you're in the presence of God, you don't, you don't talk. <laughs> he, you, you're revering his presence by being awestruck, being amazed. And you mentioned mystery. Yeah, there's mystery, there's beauty, there's fascination, there's mm -hmm. uh, imagination, there's a delight, there's joy, um, because you're in his presence, you're in God's presence, and he's invited you into that space. So take your shoes off and, and worship. And, and so often we look at prayer, um, you know, technically or uh, with specific requests in mind. How many times have we been asked to pray for specific things? Pray for this or pray for, I don't want to use examples because I don't want to hurt people's feelings, but there's so often we're praying for things that are really asking God for what we want of that person or that possession, or that circumstance, or whatever it may be. And, um, you know, God has, God cares with, with us for those details. But, um, and yes, certainly pray, ask. But there's a deeper sense of presence and awareness when we're simply just there. Mm -hmm. We're showing up, and we're inviting God into our space to say what he needs to say. Uh, and I like to encourage groups when you pray, do, what do you, what's your question for God today? Ask that question and listen for the answer. And you talk about mysterious, then it, then it really does become a little on the mysterious side because a prick of conscience could be his answer. You know, what do I do about this person that I'm in conflict with? And the prick of conscience may say, go resolve the conflict. And so God is maybe speaking through that prick of conscience, or he may be speaking directly through his word that we've just been sitting with, or he may gently give us clarity of mind 
regarding the next step to be taken, and we thank him for that. Or, or he he may be whispering something to us that that we're unable to truly discern. So we need a help. We need a, a friend, a spiritual guide, a companion to help us discern. Discernment is a big part of listening prayer because when we start listening and not doing all the talking, as you said, when we're doing all the talking, we're in control. But when we're stopping talking, uh, we're giving the Spirit his full control. But we may mishear. Frankly, we may hear some other voice of some shaming past relationship in our life that, of course, says, you know, you, you're not good enough or you don't deserve that or whatever. So when we come out of our prayer closet and we come to each other as friends, we need to say, that's what we've heard. And you, as my spiritual friend, need to say, actually, that's not, that's not how God speaks. That God's mm-hmm. not a shamer. God, God doesn't taunt you, ridicule you, ridicule you or put you down. That's not God. So let's go back to God together, maybe, so that we can be hearing a more gentle, more God-like voice. So yeah, there's mystery, Matt. There's a lot of mystery to this. Yeah, Alice Alice Farling wrote about that very thing you were just highlighting, Steve, about how recognizing the voice of Jesus is a learned art. Yeah. And unless we know how to distinguish the voice of Jesus from the voice of a stranger or an imposter or the voice of the enemy of our soul, we we won't know which voice to follow. We don't know who who's leading. And so part of our part of our spiritual journey, part of our life of prayer, part of learning to listen to God is to pay attention to the gentle whispers of God's spirit, um, which is right, is is often gentle and and quiet rather than loud and you know kind of in our face it's i i don't i'm kind of saying this out loud but i'm not sure that the god is very often in my life just turned up the volume above all the other voices to get my attention it's i have to i have to still and quiet all those other competing voices and then it's like here's the voice the primal voice that has been there from the beginning, all along, the voice yeah. of truth, the voice of life. That's a good word. It's a very good word. Our colleague Susan says, discernment or learning the voice of the Holy Spirit comes over time with familiarity. I like that. With familiarity. When when we're asking the Lord to speak um, like, like Samuel, you know, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Um there requires of us some attentiveness, some some noticing that comes out of silent reflection and really uh, pausing deeply to notice and to receive from God. She also says, you know, sometimes a few discernment questions are really good to keep in mind. Things like, is this in line with what God speaks in Scripture? Is what I'm hearing in line with what I know of God? If this is of the Spirit, does it reveal the fruit of the Spirit? Those are really good questions. Yeah, they are. Because it helps to clarify the voice that we're listening to or attending to. God loves us. God delights in us. God wants to be known by us. Um, And so he's going to make himself known. He's He's a God of clarity. He's not a God of confusion. And so we need to be confident in that and really trust that in in the Lord, we can certainly listen in our prayers. So Matt, we really haven't talked about how to. Um, Very briefly, if I can just say, when you want to practice listening prayer, be in your prayer closet, uh, be in the word first, you know, really really get into a spacious place, a reflective space where it's uncluttered, unhindered, unhurried. You know, just be there with God, be present with God. So perhaps after you've been maybe doing Lexio Divina, being in the scriptures, 
that maybe that'll lead you into your your listening prayer. It may provoke a question, or you may have a discernment question that you bring before the Lord. And so in your quiet, in your reflective space, ask the Lord whatever it is that you want to ask. There's no question that's off limits. So ask him and then sit quietly and wait. And if you're noticing either that prick of conscience or an unction of the spirit or something is being enlightened in your mind as to a way forward, you know, jot it down in your journal. And when you come out of your prayer closet, find your spiritual companion and have a conversation. And make sure that spiritual companion is someone who knows you and loves you and has your best interests in mind, not someone that's going to manipulate you or, or, you know, taunt you or whatever, or ridicule you, you know, it's no, someone that you really have a trusted soul companion, because you need that. If you're going to practice listening prayer, you need some way of discerning the voice of God. Uh, because it'll come out of the scriptures, you'll notice him, you'll notice him in the beauty of creation, but you'll also notice God in your prayers, and in your prayers to listen well, listen attentively. Uh, my spiritual director used to say about listening prayer, he's like, he's like listening prayer is like uh, a father playing hide and seek with their child, and hiding with behind the curtain, but making sure his right foot is sticking out of the curtain, because he wants to be known. He wants to be found. And so that's a that's good metaphor, if you will, for listening prayer. God wants you to receive from him. God wants to speak. God wants to make himself known. God wants to companion you. And in listening prayer, we are assured of that. We are able to experience that. So Matt, I wonder if it's time for you to take over again, because each time of this season, we want to have some experiential time of consideration related to each of the topics that we're covering. And last time we talked about Lexio Divina. Today, we're talking about listening prayer. We're talking about some foundational spiritual practices that LTI believes in firmly. And you and I practice these and our team does. We believe that they're like the big rocks in the jar that get placed there first. And listening prayer is certainly one of those big rocks. So brother, take us to uh, a deeper place, a deeper awareness, a deeper understanding. I invite you into a posture of reflection. Whether you're out on a walk, you're driving, or seated somewhere comfortably, receive this invitation to notice God, Father, Son, and Spirit. I now invite you into a deeper awareness of God's presence and work in your life. So over the next few minutes, would you consider these reflection questions? Perhaps you'd like to open one or even both of your hands in a posture of receptivity. Maybe you'd like to pause this portion of the podcast after each question. Either way, may these moments be received as a gift as you commune with the triune God. Consider for a moment what makes for a good conversation between you and another person.
And what would it look like for this to characterize your prayer? When you're listening attentively to another, how do you pay attention with your body, with your ears, with your eyes, with your other senses? And what might it look like for this to characterize your prayer? For a moment, think of a time when you've been sure that you have heard from the Lord. And what made you sure?
How do you notice the Holy Spirit inside you? And how do others you respect in the spiritual life notice the work of God's Spirit in them? Thank you, Matt, for leading us through this practice so graciously and reflectively. Truly, our hope, our prayer is that listening prayer will take root in your heart and will reap great fruit for your soul. Friends, LTI is here for you. You can find us very simply at leadershiptransformations.org. And now may the Lord bless and protect you. May the Lord's face radiate with joy because of you. May he be gracious to you, show you his favor, and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Discerning Leader podcast is made possible by the generosity of friends like you. To encourage our team with a gift of any amount, please visit leadershiptransformations.org. Send along a note with your gift. We'd love to hear from you. Remember, a listening leader is a discerning leader. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Discerning Leader podcast.